Hello, YouTube and Facebook friends. This is Judy. It's January 30th, 2016. And I, um, I want to come on to encourage uh, the bride about the rapture. Um, it's, it's getting really upsetting on the news and um, things are accelerating really fast. Um, the disasters and the persecution and um, the the shootings, it's just the culmination of all of these different calamities all at once. It feels like we're going um, through life on a roller coaster now, and um, it's upsetting because we have to keep our foundation firm in the Lord. And the Lord always says He's very big on waiting on Him, and don't forget. What appears to be tarrying to us, I mean, you know, there's there's no clock on the uh, upstairs. There's no clock. There's a clock here. We're very aware of time here on planet Earth. But in the heavens, there's no clock. So um, what feels to us like something is passing us by or that we've been passed over or overlooked or um, uh, you know forsaken it's not true and I just want to read you a few scriptures uh, what the Lord says about waiting uh, it's very encouraging uh, if you go to Psalms 27 14 it says wait on the Lord be of good courage and he shall strengthen thine heart wait I say on the Lord uh, then here's a good one, Habakkuk 2, 3. For the visions is yet for the appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. You see, that's what it means. It means for us, we feel like he's been delayed. But really, he hasn't, because we have time. We Everything we do here is by the clock. So it just feels that way. But he's not late, and he, he hasn't forsaken us. So just hang on to your faith, okay? Uh, this one is Psalms 37, 34. Wait on the Lord and keep his way, and he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. And, and when the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it so you know all our persecutors he's going to put us them under our feet just like uh god the father is going to put uh the world under the lord's feet you know all these um you know people in our lives that have um persecuted us and treated us unfairly and lied and slandered and humiliated us and all of that. It, it, he, God's going to take care of that and we're going to be witness to it. So that's something to look forward to. Um, then we go to uh, Galatians 2.20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. That's right. And he's not going to forsake you. So remember that one. Um, we can also go to um, 1 John 3, 2, which it says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when we shall appear, we shall be like him. And we shall see him as he is. So that's exciting. Uh, then we can go to Titus 2.13. Uh, looking for that blessed hope. And the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus, Savior Jesus Christ. That's right. He's the blessed hope. I was watching uh, the other day a clip from the Baker program. And... Um, I, he's got a regular guest now, um, Michael um, Schneider, I think his name is. And um, although I like Michael Schneider very much, and I think he's um, 
very intelligent and he knows a lot about the Bible. Uh, the, the other day he got on there and he was hammering home that there was not going to be a pre-tribulation rapture. And I could just feel how many, many people out there are going to be crushed from from that. And God, that's I, I even typed on the on the thread, you, you're twisting God's words. What about the blessed hope? <laughs> he just destroyed the blessed hope. Uh, so, you know, when you see something like that, turn it off. Don't let it crush your spirit because there's so many passages in Scripture that leads us to a pre-tribulation rapture. And all they have is uh, that verse in Matthew 24, which they hammer, which w they, they, they beat that, that Scripture like a dead horse in order to drive their case home. But there are so many places in Thessalonians and where, you know, Jesus says, I go and prepare a place for you. And I really and truly believe that the Lord is going to, um, uh, you know, uh, deliver this whole uh, rapture uh, through the, the Jewish wedding um, uh, festivities. And it's going to play out that way. I believe it. I believe it in my heart. And... Um, don't don't stop believing because uh, Jesus is not going to forget about his people. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about is the salvation prayer. Um, I put the salvation prayer up quite a bit on uh, my Facebook channel. And I have a prayer group, of course. A lot of you know prayers online on Facebook. And um, I just wanted to say that you know, the salvation prayer uh, is more than just reciting a prayer. You have to um, be con have some kind of um, sincerity in your heart. You know, you have to be sincere. You have to arrive at this place in your heart where you are broken and you surrender. Uh, without that, the, the salvation prayer is just words. Um, so, you know, when you do say the salvation prayer, you have to come forward in belief in Jesus Christ and everything that he did on the cross. Um, and you have to believe that he died for our sins and you have to believe that you're a sinner. If you don't believe that you're a sinner, it's not going to it's not going to do anything. It's just words. You have to believe those things. You have to believe he died for all sinners and that he rose again on the third day. And he's the living God. And he will come and dwell inside of you and change you and make you just like him. So um, without that, the salvation prayer is not going to be effective. So I just wanted to put that out. And another thing I wanted to say uh, that we are coming very, very close to something really happening. Because um, a few nights ago, I had a very quick vision of four horsemen on their horses with flags. It was really quick. And uh, then that day, I'm driving in my car, and um, when I get an impulse to look somewhere, I know it's the Lord giving me that impulse because I could look at numbers all day long and they they don't jump out at me except when the Lord wants me to notice something he gives me that strong impulse to turn my head and look and that's what he did to my odometer and the last three numbers on the odometer was seven 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 so I says well Lord you know what do you, what do you what do you mean by this seven 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 and um, he said to me, he, it's judgment, it's completeness of everything, completing everything, and it's uh, the judgment. It's the seven um, seals, it represents the seven trumpets, and it represents the seven bowls. So, um, and then later on that day, even further along that day, he turned my head to look at uh, you know one of these LED signs that you know scroll all the colors and the words inside of the building um, some store I was passing in my car and was flashing 144 
okay? So I knew to put these three things together. But then there was a fourth thing because the next day he spoke to me. He woke me up and he said, you know, the Lord does this a lot to me. He just gives me one word. And he said, um, panacea to me. And I had to look that up to make sure I knew what he was referring to. And I know it's like, you know, a panacea could be like uh, somebody thinks that chicken soup is is the is going to cure everything. Uh, it's kind of like what it means. Um, but then when I looked it up, you know, when you look something up, they give you sample sentences so that you understand how to use the word. And um, this is where he qualified what he meant by panacea. Um, panacea, listen to what one of the sample sentences were. You're not going to believe this. It says, the president seems to believe that a two-state solution in Israel is the panacea for stopping the spread of radical Islam. I mean, what are the chances of me looking up a word panacea and then seeing that show up in the in the description to make the person understand how to use the word so that was another another message uh, you know the lord um gave me so you know things are moving along the lord has been speaking to me here and there um i have a whole bunch of beautiful pictures that the lord showed me um, I have some beautiful uh, Aurora Borealis that I took in the last couple of days. Uh, f for some reason, the skies are just, I don't know if it's because of these CMEs that have been happening, but um, I took some incredible shots today of the colors uh, in the sky. And uh, also the Lord sent me another Aurora Borealis in the shape of a bird because he knows I love birds. So I'm going to put that up now. And um, I want to, you know, just say, everybody, God bless everybody. Um, hang on there, okay? Don't give up. Hang on tight. Jesus loves you. Um, you know, we're all in this together. We're all going through the motions every day. We're hanging on. We're praying. You know, we're fighting off the demons and the devil. And, um, you know, we have to stick together. That's one thing we have to do as uh, the bride of Christ. We can't get upset with each other or uh, you can't, you know, uh, because we know each other, you know, you can't listen to something that we're talking about and take things personal. Uh, when I personally come on here and do um, a talk about something, it's because the Lord puts it on my heart uh, to say, uh, to talk about a specific subject. Otherwise, I wouldn't be on here, um, you know, uh, doing anything. I wouldn't do it from myself. It's really the Lord that puts his hand on my back and pushes me to talk about certain things. Um, and sometimes when I watch um, other videos, uh, the Lord will actually use people in those other videos that I'm watching to... Um, cross-reference something else that he told me or give me confirmation and um, you know part of this waiting too I want to bring up is that the Lord um, is actually making us hungry for heaven um, you know he knows what the desires of your heart are and uh, you know I love animals I just I can't get enough of them and I just that's it's like my main source of affection and love is from these little creatures I have a couple of cats and and a dog and I have uh, outside my whole uh, back porch I feed my birds every day and the squirrels come up and I just get so much pleasure and joy from God's uh, creatures and he knows that. And um, he let me know recently that um, heaven, uh, he's showing me all these beautiful animals in heaven, these wild animals, and they're all tame, and they're all loving, and he's letting me know that that uh, we can interact with them. So, see, the Lord, when he says, I have so much planned for you individually, because he knows what you love in your heart, and as as a 
um, inheritance, that's what he's going to give you. So, um, you know, think about that, you know, when, um, when you get discouraged and you hear somebody talking against, uh, you know, the Lord coming for you, you know, just think of that. Think of all the, what the Lord says he's got planned for you on the other side, and it makes the waiting worthwhile. Uh, you know, it's just, he's just amazing. He's just incredible. So um, I'll be back again, and I'm going to put up a few. I'm going to make another video after this and show you some of the beautiful photos uh, that uh, the Lord showed me in the last week. Okay, so God bless everybody, and uh, have a great weekend in the Lord. I love you. Bye-bye.